So it's time for a change, ladies and gentlemen. So let's revisit eight classic paradigm flaws. Workload and overuse of the preeminent causes of injury. Eh, thank you for playing, that is not true. I don't have time to cover that, um, but that's not true. Uh, current standard operating procedure with regards to game time performance relievers is effective, proven, and time tested. Eh, so thank you for playing. Obviously, relievers get injured at a rate equal to uh, starters. So that's not good. One monolithic universal system will work very well for most relievers. Obviously not. Games are unpredictable, so customized and specific ramp up would be a fruitless endeavor. Nope. Um, uh, really customized and specific warm up for each individual th that they are ready when they need to be ready is exactly the way to go. Preparing to enter the game as a reliever is almost exclusively a matter of getting your arm warm to throw. That's not true. In other words, a ramp up is about throwing. That's not true. Most of the ramp up is about all of it, not just throwing. The athlete, the effects of effective physical preparation has little influence on the psychology, mindset, or mental state. Actually, moving around in the bullpen, getting ready to throw, is as important as anything. It's part of your routine. It is saying, "I." When we walk in this. The, see the bell over here, our summer guys come in in the morning and they walk over here and ring the bell. Now why would they do that ritual? The ring the bell says, I am here, I am ready to go to work. It's part of the ritual to get the brain to say, okay, I'm present, let's go. And it's just part of all the little things that we do. The effects of inef uh, the ineffective physical preparation has little influence, influence upon health and durability, not true. It's everything about health and durability and has little influence on an athlete's ability to be at his best from the first pitch. <laughs> this, this is not going to surprise anyone here, right? How important is the first pitch when you, get in, you come into the game, late in the game, and the, and the score is tight? Your first pitch is, you got to be ready from pitch one, Right? How many times have you sit to you turn to your assistant and go, man, I hope he's ready. Is he ready? Right? All of a sudden the bases are clear and you go, well, they answered that question. Or or ball four, right? That's that's always fun. Bring in a guy, walk a guy. That's that's exciting. And then we go, you weren't ready. Come on, right? Seriously. We we need to really shake ourselves with that. Right? All right. The average relief pitcher's ramp up is often way too steep. <laughs> this, is, this is what they look like. Oh my gosh, I got to go in the game. And by the way, I experienced this when I was out in the Cape. I was watching Garrett play in the Cape, and I watched somebody that was taken in the third overall pick in the draft sitting in a chair at, at 5 30 at night. It's 54 degrees. And at 6.40, he gets up his chair, throws the ball eight times and is in the game with 40 radar guns. And I sit there in horror, hoping nothing bad happened, right? It, and it, this happens over, no one thought, I think I was the only one uh, scared in the entire place. It was frightening. This, there's no way that young man, and it was a, I mean, I think he went, I don't know, it was worth $5 million, I don't know, something like that. Um, and no one seemed to blink an eye at this. Um, how does each pitcher go from cold at rest? There's Mo Rivera sitting in the two, getting people out in the out with the game on the line. So um, we want we don't want. Uh, let's go back to this. <clears throat> Hope is not a plan. We already know from previous data of injury, soft tissue isn't fully ready for the intensity of the game. Pain, injury, inconsistent performance will often be the result. Our guy has to be fully lathered, right? Wake up, warm up. How many times you said it, Randy? One of the best ways to improve your velo is have a better warm up, right? We see it all the time, right? Actually, this is common sense. Trying to get max effort without the body and arm being fully warmed up is not a good idea. We have a saying at the ranch that your body can only recruit what's awake, right? How much, if you're, if you're a young guy, if your guy is gonna throw at 80 miles an hour, 85, 90, 95, how much of his body does he, and that's going to be a max throw, how much of his body does he need to have awake? All of it, right? And yet, what do we do? We spend all of our time on the arm. The arm is just the last portion of the throw. It's not the primary part. So we don't want to get a pitcher too hot, right? So 
we're, we're afraid of this, right? We're afraid in the bullpen. We get this guy up and we get him too hot. So what do we do? Well, we don't want him to get worn out before he enters the game. We may not need him. We don't want to waste him for later tonight or tomorrow. So there's the dilemma, right? So what do we do? We try to save him. We try to do him as little as possible. I think it's a bad idea. We need to start. If he's going to be in at all, and I'll explain this to you, but everyone Everyone is going to do something. If you're in my bullpen, if, I've, if I'm in charge of the bullpen, everybody every night is doing something. Uh, and it, it's, most of the time, it's not going to be throwing, right? I want to have you do something so that the next night you're ready. There's nothing worse than doing nothing for four hours. Right? There's nothing worse than that. You've just wasted four hours. So here's the alternative. This is one of my favorite cartoons. This is really an innovative approach, but I'm afraid we can't consider it. It's never been done before, right? So the first thing, step one, we got to communicate better. So here's my suggestions to you. Individual probable, probable work week communique, right? So I'm going to take Coach Foley here. And um, so one week out with all of his pitchers, it allows him to cycle in work, uh, his, the workouts for the week, um, he's going to kind of tell people what their work league looks like. This guy's starting in game here. This guy's starting. This guy's first relief here. This guy's second relief. This guy's closing. And this is, these are the guys that are going to be on. This is the probable work week, so they can take a look at the week in front of them. Um, we're not, uh, we'll, we'll call our starters, but I'm not saying that everybody's going to pitch. You're just saying you're going to be available on these, these days. Um, so other dynamic created by not knowing is in the constant state of limbo. Most of your pitchers, and even at the major league level, they're maybe, maybe not, right? Uh, then every day becomes Groundhog Day. You're trying to save it for the next day. And this is not a good idea. I end up doing the minimum just in case. Um, I refer to it as pre preparation purgatory, right? It's not an ideal place to be over a long season. Um, so the day before I go to bed tonight, uh, what is the probability I'm going to be used tomorrow? I think all of us would like to know that. Never under underestimate the power of being able to go into to sleep knowing tomorrow is game on or tomorrow is preparation day. It allows an unconscious mind to sort through things and prepare itself for peak performance. Game day. In today's game, here's another. So, so you can see this communication. What about today's game? What is my window of most probable use? Right? Several hours before the game, each pitcher who is on active list should know in what window they will most likely be utilized. That doesn't mean they will be. It means when they're most likely to be utilized. So I could do, let's go through your staff, right? And I could pick one. And you would go, I go, is he going to start? And you go, not only no, but hell no. Right, he's not starting. Is he going to close? No. Well, when's he going to be used? Well, he would only be used, you would say to me, he would only be used in this situation. And he would only be used in the fourth or the fifth. When we, well, then draw that out, right? So being able to have them understand what, what inning, what score, what scenario. In other words, the coach is painting a picture of possible scenarios. You don't have to narrow yourself down um, uh, to, to the degree which he's going to be upset if he doesn't pitch. You're trying to prepare him for this window. Right? For most of the time when I pitch in college, I'm going to pitch the seventh, eighth, or ninth. I knew that. Right? Well, this is important because now I know if the starter is really in bad shape in the first inning, I'm not the one that's going to be in there in the second inning if the thing blows up. I'm not. Right? But there are several guys on my staff that they may have been the, the emergency starter. A guy pulls a hamstring, the guy gets sick, whatever. They better be prepared for that. Right? Um, Allows the pitcher to set up their ideal ramp up. So I know I'm going to go in. Mo Rivera, the closer has been the, has been the one thing. The starter and the closer for ma most of Major League Baseball has been the, the lucky ones, right? Mo Rivera knew he wasn't going in in the fifth. He knew that if the score was right, he's going to go in what? The ninth. So he could start preparing uh, in the first all the way through. He could do his routines. He could get ready. But most people don't have that capability. So you're going to have to figure out what is that. Are they in the middle innings? Are they, are they an emergency starter? I'm going to get to that list in a second, and you want to make sure you circle that. In today's game, what is my window? Ideally, a well-functioning bullpen. This is my next take that I want you to get, right? 
in my opinion, and ideally a well-functioning bullpen. This is where I actually talk. I actually had conversations with Wes Johnson and Derek Johnson about this, right? A well-functioning bullpen, and by the way, not when they were with the Minnesota Twins or the Cincinnati Reds. I had the conversation with them when they were in their, when they were college coaches, right? A well-functioning bullpen should be a nonstop ebb and flow of activity as some pitchers are coming off their window and others are in the middle of the preparation and others are just beginning the ramp up. Instead of, you know what most bullpens look like? Pure quiet or holy shit, go, 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 go. That's what they are. That's a dysfunctional bullpen. A functional bullpen is an ebb and flow. I know what's, I'm, this is my window is starting to come up and I'm starting to move around. And therefore, when this starts to click a little bit sideways, now I know what I'm going to do. Unfortunately, most people never get their bullpen going until it's too late. And then it's go, go. Have you ever been in the bullpen? And they're like, go, 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 right? That's a phenomenal place for high achievement and performance, isn't it? Everybody's on pure panic mode. And we wonder why they go in and walk somebody, right? You've set that up. It should be a constant flow every day. Flowing as some guys are coming on to their window and some guys are coming down. Let's say I'm the guy that's an emergency starter. If the starter goes down, I'm in. Well, he's gone through three and he's been pretty good. Now what? I'm done. I, I, I can now go sit down. I can play my game in, in the cups with the sunflower seeds, but, but now I'm done. There's somebody else now that's entering the fourth, fifth, and sixth. That's when they're going to flow in, right? Um, there should be no panic and adjustments to, to changing game dynamics should appear to be standard operating procedure. This is what I urge you to do. If you're really well prepared, adjustments in game are standard operating procedure. I saw this coming, right? If this, then this. If this, then this. I'm prepared for this. If I, I put in Woolforth and he blows up, I'm not like, I didn't see that coming. I'm ready. I see, I see what's next. I have a what's next always in mind. The, the polar opposite dynamic, bullpens that are either completely quiet or hyperactive are often signs of a reactionary system. Okay, so here's, here's, my, here's my categories. And you guys can make it however you want. This makes sense to me in my head, right? The starter. Ready at game time. Emergency starter. Ready at game time until the third inning. Long relief. Need to be ready in innings two to four. Middle relief. Need to be ready in innings five to eight. Specialty relief. Typically a specific matchup through innings five to nine. I got a lefty guy, Eric. I got a lefty guy with a really good curveball. I got, a, I got Garrett Wolforth up and I want to a breaking ball, right? There's my guy, right? Not going to be out there for three guys. He's going to be out there for one guy, right? Now, how many of you guys have a staff? I see this all the time, especially at the college level, but even pro level, they have a staff and about three or four, they use three or four guys over and over and over and over and over and everybody else sitting over there just watching the game. You got to use the staff and I, you got to find out what, in what way can this guy help you? And maybe he can't help you now. What way could he possibly help you if you trained him right? Right? Um, then setup, the bridge, needed between, uh, get re needed ready six to eight. Closer, needed eighth on unless specific conditions warrant. Extra innings, extender, those who throw in the 10th or 13th, right? Everybody should be categorized on this. And then the other category is you're off today. Like you were yesterday starter or, right, you threw three or four innings, you relief and you're on. This is what I would say pregame classifications. If you can classify your people this way, and they know where they're at, they can start to build in that they're ready to go when, uh, when the bullets start flying. Um, our goal is to create a well-functioning bullpen an ebb flow of activity. There should be no panic. And uh, so now I'm gonna talk really briefly about the ramp up itself, right? Now I talked about the general thing, now let's talk about specifically. Each, uh, this is probably the third slide that's really important. Each individual pitcher at the Texas Baseball Ranch or Texas Consortium, I, uh, the Ranch Consortium, actually, I'm, I'm sure Randy does this in some fashion or form. We, when they leave a summer program with me, we have an exit meeting and they've got to show me their four warmups. They have to show me their four warmups. Four of them. I want four of them. 
four ramp ups. The ramp up number one is that they have unlimited time. It's their ideal ramp up. I say, show me. If you're going to pitch today in the World Series and you're going to get the start, what does that look like? Do you start two hours, three hours, 45 minutes? What, what does that look like? And they have to go through. What is it that you're looking at, right? The next one. Now, you notice I said one, four, two, three. That's not a typo. Four is emergency. That's the oh, crap, right? And that's going to happen. That's going to happen. Oh, you got an emergency. You got 10 minutes to get ready. What are you going to do? Tell me what you're going to do. Right? I want to prepare you for that. So when, the, when that hits, I go, okay, Carson, you're in in 10 minutes. You go, well, that's not ideal. And you go get your stuff. Right? You don't go, oh, I don't know. Uh, right? No, you know what? It's not ideal. But what's your favorite thing? If you had, five, if you had 10 minutes to get warmed up, what's the first thing you would do? Okay. Perfect. See, so that's what we want. And we want that so ingrained in you that when I go, that's how much you go, how much time I got? You're off and you're gone. You're gone, right? That's the hyper-personalization of that, right? Number two, within 30 minutes available. And number three, within 15 to 20, right? So we got kind of that, you kind of know where you're at. Uh, and I'll show you how we, how we help our people do that. Um, but that's basically, they have four different warm-ups, right? Now, if you don't do that, guess what you're going to have? You're going to have guys in the bullpen not knowing what to do, and they're going to spend most of their time doing what? Throwing. Right? And they may not be completely warmed up, and they may not have their... There's a lot of things that can go bad with that. Do not leave that to chance. You're going to... This is, a, this is something you want to make sure they have their own particular ramp-ups. Uh, I see Coach Wallace sometimes do it with our uh, older guys. He would go, okay, today, emergency warm-up. That's all you got. You got 20 minutes. Go get it. See what you got. See what you look like. So here we are in our training, right? 20 minutes. Because at the ranch, and I'm sure both ranches, they like the feeling of warm-up. Carson, I know you do. You're, you're down there for hour getting warmed up. Our guys like that. It's comfort zone, right? And most of the time, that's good. But sometimes you got to go, that's not the real world. Real world is, oh my God, you're in. Now what are you going to do? So you got to kind of figure this out. So that's what we do, all right? 